Harlem High basketball games. This is state tournament, Lynn Classical, on the road, their first game away from home, and their second game in the tournament. Both of these teams drew buys. Charlestown, the number one seed, 21 and one, and making a homecoming visit here at Salem High School is Jack O'Brien, the coach of Charlestown, who formerly coached Salem High School to a state championship here. And his assistant is Zach Zagorowski, who played at Salem High School and was an outstanding player here at Salem High School. So they're back playing at a court that they're familiar with. Their players obviously aren't. It's a neutral site. Classical is the visitors. They got their green and gold on because they are the lowest seed. They're number four at 16 and three. They defeated Lincoln Sudbury to get here. As we mentioned, Charlestown knocked off Belmont to get here. And once you get to the semifinals, which is this is, this is a semifinal division two north. When you get here uh, to this level, to the semifinals, it has to be a neutral site. So George Russell wears number five. Wearing number one is Lamar Brathwaite. Number three is Jason White. Number 21 is Kevin Barr. And number 33 is Paul Becklins, and he's from Lynn. He played some basketball, I believe, at Easton Junior High. And he's traveling back and forth to Charlestown, opting to go school choice. Classical in a 2-1-2 zone. The shot, Becklins gets it off and running. They give him two as they hit the outside shot. Charlestown comes up with the steal. The shot around the rim and out. Loose on the floor. Tyler battling. They finally get it ahead to Alvin Abruce. Stolen away, but they're out of bounds. Becklin's almost stolen away. Alberto Rodriguez, Alvin Abru, Vince Spence, uh, Justin Davis, and Shaitan Tyler. The five out there, and Charlestown will go strict man to man. They'll double any chance they get. A brew takes the shot, can't hit it. Rebounded by Brathwaite. The lead pass looking for Becklins. Took a couple of extra steps, did Ridley Johnson, but he laid it in. Spence gets it, Alvin Abreu. Stops for the three, no good. Rebound by White. White takes it strong to the basket, can't hit it. Tip Abreu, they have numbers. Bounce pass to Davis, double clutches and lays it in. Well, Classical gets on the board, Abreu to Davis, and it's 4-2, Charlestown. The three-point shot off the rim, no good. Abreu pushing it up again. Keeps it, takes a shot off the glass, and it goes. Charlestown well, scores four. Classical comes back and gets four of their own, and we're deadlocked at four. Blocked nicely by Spence. The clear out, Spence tips it. A brew winds up with it. Finally, after getting a tip from Rodriguez, nice play by Spence blocking the shot. Davis from three in the corner, no good. Spence with the rebound. Almost lost it, goes to the basket. Throws it in and gets fouled. Vince Spence did a great job controlling the ball. Started to fall down. Rebound and missed by Davis. Started to go to the floor, kept the dribble alive. Then got a little spin, took it into the lane. Threw it up and his prayer was answered. As it dropped in, he's got a chance for a three-point play. No good. Tip knocked out of bounds by Charlestown. Rodriguez and Tyler battling, keeping it alive in bounds, and Charlestown finally knocked it out. Tyler back to Abreu. Abreu goes to the basket. 
He's going to go to the line. Good strong drive to the hoop by Alvin Abreu. Uh, the other semifinal is Salem against East Boston. They're playing at Chelsea. So the winner of that will play the winner of this at the Songus in Lowell. That's what these teams are shooting for. Abreu misses the first. Rashad Skeens a substitution in the ballgame as Abreu makes one. LaRoyal Hairston is in as well, and now Chowstown turns it over. Full court pressure. Both these teams want track meets. Classical tries to press. Chowstown will press, but they'll also double and triple team any chance they get. Davis, left hand and no good. Brathwaite's going to get called for steps. He rebounded the ball and slipped, and he actually fell over. Tyler, who was on the floor, and that's where the travel started. So Clasco got a break. They get the ball back. Abreu takes the shot from dead in the corner. No good. Tipped up, tipped up again. Finally picked off by Russell, and they'll give it to Becklins. Becklins, the three, no good. Tipped up, the ball goes to the floor. Rodriguez and Becklins battling. It'll be Classical's basketball with the alternate possession. 7-4 Classical here in the first three minutes. Lance Green and Bernard Coleman in the ballgame for Charlestown. Abreu almost lost it. Gets it back. Under the basket, Davis all by himself lays it in. When you double and triple, you're going to leave somebody open. That time they left Davis wide open under the basket. Long three-point shot. is good hit. Nothing but net for Hairston. Davis again, missed the shot. Tyler with the follow, lays it in. I thought that was a three-point basket by Hairston. Shot around the rim and in by Coleman. Davis gets swallowed up. And we get a foul. Charlestown is not questioned at basket by Houston as well. Classical called a timeout. That shot by Houston was a three. With no question. Welcome back as we're set to start the second half. A one point lead for Lynn Classical. In that first half, Ridley Johnson actually was the main force. He had 14 points. Charleston had eight different scorers. Four of them had four points. But Johnson led the way for Classical. Davis had six. Watson had seven. Abu had 10. Vince Spence had 11. And Classical has the basketball to start the second half. Knocked away by Charleston. It goes out of bounds. Classical will get the ball back. Abreu will put it in play. Johnson and Becklins and White and Brathwaite. Rodriguez finally gets the handle, lost it out of bounds. He couldn't, he kept trying to get it, kept trying to grab a handle of it. And every time he tried, he kept knocking it away. He finally went out of bounds. This is Johnson. This is Brathwaite. White. Becklins, good for two. They let a brew bring it up. 
Counts down by one. Early seconds of the second half. A brew with a long three. Under pressure, throws it in. His second triple. Out of bounds, off Charlestown. Clasco gets it back. Spence looking to bring it up. Gives it back to Abreu. Inside to Rodriguez. He gets loose and throws it in. Rodriguez's first basket. White from dead in the corner, too strong. Davis had it, lost it, got it back. Abreu will bring it up, Clasco by four. Davis goes to the basket. Good job, he used his body to screen the defense out and made sure he got a two-shot foul. He threw the little half-running hook. Kept the defense on his back, and he's at the line shooting a couple. First one by Davis is good. Justin makes them both, and Classical has their biggest lead of six, 45-39. Straightaway shot, no good. Rebound inside nicely by George Russell as he lays it in. Again, Charlestown doing a job off the offensive glass. Abreu gets swallowed up, tip from Rodriguez to Spence. Spence throws it in. Tough shot by Spence. He had two or three guys all over him. Somehow he find a way to knock it down, and it's 47-41. From the free throw line, the shot no good. Another offensive rebound by Charlestown. And the ball gets kicked away by Tyler. Tyler, Rodriguez, Spence, Abreu, and Davis. The normal starting five for Classical on the floor. Becklins, White, Brathwaite, Johnson, and Russell out there for Charlestown. Three point shot, no good. Again, an offensive rebound. They kick it back out to Becklins. No good. Rebound again inside by Charlestown. No good. Rodriguez knocks it loose. It goes to the floor. Abreu, he's got Davis with him. Back to Abreu. He let didn't hit the shot. Off the rim a couple of times and fell out. Johnson comes back the other way and lays it in. It's a four point turnaround. Great passing by Davis and Abreu, and you won't see Alvin miss too many of those. Abreu takes it to the basket, no good. Russell with the rebound. The kick ahead to Johnson. Offensive foul against Johnson. Tyler took the charge. Jack O'Brien thinks it should have been a foul, but he's not going to get it. Davis. Spence didn't take the three. Nice pass underneath to Davis. He lays it in. Great look. Spence faked the three-point shot. Then went up in the arc. He's going to take it from inside the arc. And found Davis underneath for the easy layup. Shot. No good. Saved right to Russell, and he lays it in. Davis had it, was falling down. 49-45. A brew is going to get called for steps. A little bit out of control that time, taking the ball up court. And got double teamed and lost it.
Inside to Russell. Back out to Johnson. This is Hairston. Becklin takes it to the basket. Gets, they're going to call a reach and foul. They're going to give him two. So the Linite, Becklin's, will be at the line shooting two. First one is good. Any one of the three high schools in Lynn would have liked to have had Beckland State in Lynn. He would have been a great addition, but he opted to go to Charlestown on school choice. And Lynn's loss was Charlestown's gain. Makes them both. Becklins will go out. White comes back in. They get it to Davis. Watson, who just came in. Spence inside to Rodriguez. Can't hit the shot. Charleston can tie it with a basket here. They could take the lead if it's a three-point basket. Shot is good for two by Skeens. And now Charlestown's battle back from a six-point deficit to tie it up. Spence takes it to the basket, can't hit it. Charlestown with numbers to the basket, up and in by Jason White. And Charlestown up on top. Underneath the Davis, nice job by Davis to spin around and lay it in. And a nice look by Spence to find him. Good head and shoulder fake at the defense, and he did a little spin. 51-51. Watson took it away, but he's going to get called for a bump. Ten forty and counting left to play in the basketball game. 51-51. Hairston. Quick move to the basket. The shot, no good. Roberto Vallon gets it to Spence. Watson goes to the basket. Can't hit it. Shot, no good. Tipped up, tipped up again. Spence comes out with it. I head to Watson. Nice pass to Davis. He lays it in. Davis has been in the right spot quite a few times. He's got 14 points, eight of them here in the second half. Hairston from outside, no good. Charlestown with another offensive rebound. Green got a good spot, rebound, he got hit, he's at the line with a chance to tie it up. 9.46 left. Green makes the shot. And if he makes this one, we're back in another time. And he does. And we got a timeout called by Charlestown. 9.46 left, 53-53. And Classical playing outstanding. Minutes and 46 seconds left in the second half. Nobody, I don't think there were many people who thought that Clasco would be dead even with 946 left against a team that had won three straight state championships, 
was the number one seed coming in and was picked by most people. Almost everybody thought it would be Charlestown against East Boston, but uh, they forgot to tell the classical kids that. Reputations don't mean much to this team. When they play as a team, they play outstanding. And they've been doing that all year here in the tournament. And they're making the extra pass. That's why Davis has got as many layups as he has. Classical is playing outstanding basketball. It's Classical's basketball in a tie game with 9.46 left. Charleston was trying to make a substitution. Spence gives it back to a brew and he'll bring it up. I head to Davis. Little shovel pass in the lane. A brew winds up with it, and we're gonna get a foul against Charlestown in the lane with a grab on a broom. Johnson will come back for Charlestown. Classical will get it out of bounds. Davis is out, Quintana is in. They go out deep to Jose Quintana, back to Watson. Quintana, Valone. And you gotta watch the double team. When you think you got one man beat, they're gonna double all the time. He turned his back and when he turned, he got doubled up. Alternate possession gives the ball to Charlestown. You gotta make the pass before the double team comes. Johnson from long range, almost came back out, but it drops in. He's got 19 points and he's given Charlestown a three point lead. A brute tries to answer back, in and out. Green with the rebound, a kick out to Johnson. The shot, no good. Knocked out of bounds by Charlestown. <laughs> Brethwaite and Russell are back. Becklin's also. Abreu will bring it up. Spence gets it over and gets doubled. Watson, short no good, tipped up by Watson, picked off by Russell. Becklin's back the other way. Back to Hairston for three, no good. Chowson got away with a push off. Steps called against Brathwaite. He didn't like the steps, but he got away with a push off to get the rebound. 8.16 left. Classical trailing Charlestown now by three. Abreu ahead. Watson. Thumps it off to Vallone. Back to Abreu from dead in the corner. Good for three. Three triples for a brew with dead even at 56. The shot from inside is up and good by Brathwaite. 58 56, Chow Sound. Back and forth we go. Spence gets it to Quintana. Spence lost it. Lost it again. Hairston takes it away. That's going to be double dribble. Good call by the official. He bounced it once on the floor, and then when he picked it up, he took off again and dribbled it again. Good call by the official.
Classical will get it in the forecourt. Trailing by two with 7.30 left. Abru. Quintana. Out to Spence for three. In and out. Vallone with a big rebound. Pulls it away and brings it back outside. Spence takes the shot, can't go. Followed by a brew is up and good. And excuse me, it's not a brew, it's Watson. Watson with the, with the tip. 58-58. The shot by Brathwaite, no good. Hairston underneath gets it and lays it in. Quintana for three. It's good! No, they're gonna give him two. They call it two and we're tied at 60. And we got a foul against Clasco. Now Clasco looking for a jump ball and they don't get it. 60-60 with 6.34, you can't ask for more than this. These are the kind of games you hope for. Are they calling it a two-shot foul? Because they're not in the bonus yet. Shot is no good. So the best that Jason White can do is give Charlestown a one-point lead. That one's no good, rebounded by Spence. So now the hammer goes to Clasco. They score, they take the lead. Tipped away, stolen away, numbers. Good defense, great defense by a brew. And we got a foul against the brew on a reach in. Did a great job on it, wide open. They forced him to take a, a bad shot. And then he couldn't come down with the rebound as Charleston got it back and then a Brew got called for the reach in. 6.15 left in the tie game. They try to get it inside. Thrown up and in by Becklins. He's got six in the second half and it's 62-60. Quintana back out to Spence. Abru steps inside the paint and throws it in. Abru with 18. And with deadlocked again. Becklin's with the shot, no good. Abru with the rebound. Comes out of the pack. Spence lost it. We're going to get a jump ball situation. It'll be Clasco's basketball. Again, they waited until the double team came before they passed the ball. If they move it quick enough, somebody's going to be wide open, as Davis was many times in the second half and in the first half. Davis is back in the ball game. They try to lob it into Rodriguez. He gets it. He's loose and lays it in. It got tipped away as they try to throw a little over the top pass. Rodriguez tracked it down and made the shot. And Clasco's on top by two. Five minutes and counting. Hairston from outside the arc. Big rebound inside by Johnson, but he lost it out of bounds. Again, Charlestown doing a job off the glass. 
but Johnson fell down, lost it out of bounds. Classical has a two-point lead in the basketball. It got tipped by Classical, it went off Davis. Four forty-five and counting. Left to play in the ball game. Classical by two. And out, Charlestown throws it away. And Clasco wants a timeout. So back and forth we go. Clasco had a one point lead at halftime. And they've done a nice job not succumbing to the Charlestown pressure. Uh, Charlestown wins their ball games off their defense, off their press. And uh, Clasco is not letting the press bother them. The one edge that Charlestown has is rebounding, especially off the offensive glass. That's what's keeping them in. Johnson with 19 points. But nine different guys have scored for Charlestown. And five of them have six or more points. Becklin's having six having eight, uh, but five of them have six points or better. And everybody that scored, the nine players have got more than one basket, they've got at least two scores. Uh, with, with the big guy, Ridley Johnson, doing the damage. A brew against Becklands. They get it to Spence. Spence gets doubled up again. Looking for Quintana. Quintana, nice job stripping it away. They lost the basketball. Nice pass to Davis underneath. Give Davis the basketball and give Quintana a great pass. Terrific look by Quintana, a great bounce pass. Classical leads by four. Coming up on four minutes left. Hairston from dead in the corner, no good. Spence had it, they lose it. The ball goes to the floor. Hairston winds up with it. Classical looking for an offensive foul, but they're not going to get it. And Charlestown will be at the line. But an outstanding bounce pass from Quintana. Davis with another layup. He's got 10 here in the second half. Didn't take him long to get back on the scoreboard once he come back in the game. And Charlestown misses another free throw. They've missed a few. Four minutes straight up and counting. Shot is good by Hairston. Rodriguez will give it to a brew. Charlestown now trying to double up any chance they get. They didn't get over in 10 seconds. They didn't get the ball over in 10 seconds. So Charlestown can get a little closer. White can't hit it. Gets his own rebound and lays it in. Again, Charlestown doing it off the offensive glass. Rodriguez will take it up. Knocked out of bounds by Charlestown. 325 left, Classical by one. They get it to a brew. Into Rodriguez. Spins and takes the shot and hits it. Big basket by Alberto Rodriguez. He had nothing in the first half. He's got six here in the second half. And Classical owns a three-point lead. Becklins. Nice drive to the basket. And lays it in. 
He's got eight in the second half and is back to a one point game with under three minutes left. Spence gets it to a brew, they lose it. And we get a foul against Spence. So Chowstown with a chance to get the lead from the free throw line. The score is Lake Pass for 68, Charlestown 67. Jason White at the line, he's the first to get the bonus. And we're right where we've been quite a few times in a ball game, deadlocked it, this time at 68. 250 left. White gives the lead back on the Charlestown side. 69-68. They go ahead to Davis. Quintana out to Spence. Inside to Rodriguez. Fakes a couple of times, gets hit, and he'll go to the free throw line. Good look by Spence again, going inside. Good head and shoulder fake by Rodriguez. Drew the defense in the air and drew the contact. And with 233 left, now Bruno with the line, shooting a couple. Too strong with the first one. They haven't shot that many, but they've missed five. They missed four free throws in the first half. That one is good by Rodriguez. Now, we're right where we were, again, deadlock. So they've shrunk the game to where it's only two minutes and 27 seconds. Good move to the basket by White. Seventy-one, sixty-nine. Nice pass to Rodriguez, blocked inside by Johnson. Big defensive play. He's got 19 points, but that might have that's one of the biggest plays in the game. 201 left. Rodriguez looked like he had an easy layup to tie it. And from nowhere, Ridley Johnson came up and tipped it away. They have the basketball, Chowstown does, with a two-point lead with 201 left in a basketball game. The winner will move on to the Songa Center to the North Final, taking on either Salem or East Boston, who's playing as we speak at Chelsea. We've gone back and forth, ebb and flow. We've been tied many, many times in this ball game. Classical got as high as six. Charleston got as high as five, the lead. Both teams have battled back. So it's going to be an interesting two, two minutes and one second. With the 30 second clock and a three point shot, it's going to be very interesting. The possession arrow favors Charlestown. They are also shooting penalty if Classical commits a foul. Classical staying in that 2 3 zone. They go cross court to White. White drives inside, dumps it off to Becklins. Back to White for the shot. It's good. White with a couple of big baskets. He scored four in a row and it's given Charlestown a four point lead. Outside the Spence. Abru from the free throw line. Can't hit it. Johnson with the rebound. And a basket here would be very big for Charlestown. Becklins drops it down for the shot. Around the rim and out. Spence with the rebound. 
and the foul is going to be on White. 104 left. Classicals are not shooting free throws. And now the clock has gone out. So we have the problem with the scoreboard again. Now it comes back on. And now we have a blinking scoreboard. That's not very old. That was put in only a few years, a couple of years ago. But we've had trouble. The game started a little bit late because of the scoreboard. It was stopped a little bit during the game because of the scoreboard. And now they're having trouble again with the scoreboard. So at least for the moment they've got it fixed. Let's hope it, it can stay that way for the, the last 104. Quintana will put it in play, and this is a must situation. They have to score. Classical has to get a score here of some kind. They'll get it to Quintana. Ahead to Davis. It goes, and it'll count. Great play by Justin Davis. They threw it up court to beat the pressure. Davis took it to the basket. And as he got hit, he threw it up. It dropped down through the twine. And he can get Classical back within a point, and that is huge. And this free throw is huge. No good. Tipped up. Rodriguez tips it up. Davis comes down with the basketball. Tip to Rodriguez. Classical wants a timeout. Davis missed the free throw and they got tipped up. He came back and got it himself. And Classical has the basketball with a chance to tie it up. 51 seconds remaining in the ball. Charlestown, 73. Lynn Classical, 71. Utopia would be for Classical to score very quickly because then they would be assured of getting the ball back even if Charlestown scored. But right now, Classical's just thinking about, let's, let's score. So the next best thing would have been for Davis to make the free throw and get back within one. But Classical will very graciously take the basketball with a chance to score and tie it. 51 ticks left on the clock in this outstanding basketball game. Two of the better teams in the state doing battle. Classical having an outstanding season, looking to extend it one more game and go to the Songus. Houston trying to get back there and make another run at yet another state championship. So Classical has the basketball. Davis, Spence, Rodriguez, Abreu, and Quintana out there. Spence will put it in play. They get it into a Bruce, throw it away, Spence gets it back. And we're going to get a foul against White. And that's going to put Spence at the free throw line. And how big are these free throws? If he makes these two free throws, Charlestown cannot run the clock out. So even if they score, Glasgow's going to have enough time to come back and tie it or win it. But, but right now, the most important product is these free throws. No good, Charlestown with the basketball. So Classical now has to play defense and shut him down. Looking for the steal. Charlestown called timeout. It would have been their basketball anyway. The possession arrow would have given it to Charlestown anyway.
31 seconds left, 13 seconds left on the shot clock. The situation here is Glasgow cannot allow Joust on the score. If they, if they make one from the free throw line, Glasgow would still have a shot coming up, but if they use up most of the 13 seconds, Glasgow would only have 18 or 19 or 20 seconds left, and it would be very tough if Charlestown scores and takes a four-point lead because Glasgow would need two possessions with only about 20 seconds left. So the defense has got to hang tough. Both teams in penalty, so both teams, if they foul, will send the other team to the free throw line. The problem with Glasgow is they haven't shot that many. They've only made five free throws but they've missed seven. And some key free throws here down the stretch have cost them. Charleston try, trying to take advantage of that. They get it to Becklands. Davis in his shirt. Shot clock winding down. They gotta get it up. Rebound by Charleston. Everybody thought the shot clock went off. Glasgow thought the shot clock was off. Becklin's got the shot off. It hit the rim. So the ball was live. Rathway went and got it and got fouled. So he's at the line. And I think Glasgow's going to take a timeout. So heads up by Brathway. Charleston got a huge break. If Becklin is on the other side of the court, he may not get the shot up, but he was right in front of the Charleston bench, and they just screamed at him that the clock was winding down. He threw it up. As he let it fly, the clock went off. It hit the rim, which keeps the ball alive. And Brathwaite rebound, the long rebound. It bounced away. Glasgow. It appears, though, Glasgow thought that the shot clock went off and it was going to be their basketball. Brathwaite recovered it. They were forced to foul him right away. And now if he makes two of these, uh, this game is just about over. If he makes one, Glasgow will need a three-point shot. They're hoping he doesn't make, they're hoping he misses the first. And Glasgow's going to make sure they box out and don't let Charlestown rebound a miss. Outstanding basketball game. It's a shame that either team has to lose this game. This would have been a great final. No good. A brew with the rebound. Classical calls timeout. Thirteen seconds left. Charlestown can't follow to put Glasgow at the line. Glasgow with a deuce can tie it. If they ever hit a three, the roof will come off this building with the Glasgow fans and the Rowdies who are here rooting, off, rooting on their team. So Glasgow has 13 seconds to try and at least send this game into overtime. Now the shoe's on the other foot. Charlestown has to play defense, although they're playing defense with a two-point lead. Glasgow's playing defense two points behind. Glasgow's not. We'll take the ball out of bounds. They have to go full court. Charlestown's not going to change. They're going to go full court pressure. They get into a brew. Spence throws it up. It's good! Spence threw it in!
They dumped it to Spence. He stepped inside the line and double clutched and threw it in. And we're tied at 73. Outstanding. Glasgow had to go the length of the court. When they got in their front court, there was only seven seconds left. Abruga to Rodriguez, the quick toss to Spence. Spence stepped up. Good defense by Charlestown. They had a hand up, but he double clutched and hit nothing but twine. He's been quiet. He got 11 points in the first half. They held him to one basket in the second half, but his second basket is a beauty. As it ties it up, we're going to go four minutes overtime. As you see a look at the scoreboard clock, 73, 73. Classical and Charlestown, outstanding. They had to play tough, tough defense to get the ball back. They had to hope that the free throw was missed. It was. And then Spence hit a tough shot. And I didn't even have to say a word. All the classical fans are from me. You could hear them as they erupted as the ball went in the basket. 73-73. Spence against Johnson for the tap. So this second season is going to go an extra four minutes. Spence taps it ahead. Too far, it goes out of bounds. It'll be Charlestown's basketball. They can get on the board first. So the seniors on these two teams are going four more minutes to try and see who stays alive. The shot up and good by Brathwaite. Spence only a sophomore. Davis for three. Rebound by White. The classical fans have got back into it. From dead in the corner, off the rim, no good. Another offensive rebound. Hairston picks it up and lays it in. 77-73. Valone. Spence. Stolen away by White, the lead pass to Johnson. Lays it in. And it's a six nothing run by Charlestown here in the overtime. They try to hit Davis on the eighth breath, White knocks it loose. So Clasco might have been up a little too high after that shot by Spence, they come out. Turn the ball over and Charlestown has exploded for six straight points. 79-73, 2.35 left in overtime. Charlestown 79, Lynn Classical 73. Two thirty-five left. Charleston has exploded for six straight points here in the overtime. After a huge lift by Spence, virtually at the buzzer, gave Classical a tie at 73. But now Charleston has run six straight points. Quintana will put it in play. They get it. To a brew, takes the shot. Can't hit it. Quintana comes out with the rebound. Out to Spence. They're looking inside to Rodriguez. Slides it across the volume, just barely 
Three point shot, no good. Quintana with another rebound. Spence out to Quintana. Dumps it inside to Rodriguez. Spins, double clutches, it got blocked. Brathwaite comes up with it. And Classical is in tough shape here. Down six with 150 and counting left. And Charlestown has the basketball and they spread the court. They're going to use their speed and ball handling to try and go one on one. White in the lane, kicks it out, the shot. No good. Johnson inside. Gets everybody loose. Goes a little reverse layup. It's good by Johnson. And that's just about going to do it. It's an 8 nothing run with 125 left. But Brewer's going to get hit outside. He'll be at the free throw line. And again, Charlestown doing the job off the offensive glass. That's what has put Charlestown in the driver's seat. Brew, he's going to make the first to get the second. <laughs> Alvin gets the first points for classical in the overtime. No good. Rebound by Spence. Spence throws it in. 81-76. Spence with a big rebound. The wraparound foul by Quintana. And all they're doing now is this is almost like North Carolina four corners. Just spread the floor. And whoever has the basketball going to try and beat them in with their head up. Anybody double teams, they'll dish it off. If they don't, they're going to take it in the basket, look for a shot, look for a foul. White picked up the foul. He's at the line, shooting one-on-one. -on -one. No good. It gets loose, kicked out of bounds. It went off Glasgow's foot. When things are going good, they're going good for Charlestown. In a skirmish with three or four guys in the floor, it had to bounce off a, a classical foot. And now they'll give it outside, and they gotta, they got to give the foul right away again. Classical's going to make this into a foul shooting contest now. They don't have a choice. They trailed by five with one minute straight up to play, and the clock stopped. And White will be back at the free throw line. He's got 14, he got 10 of them in the second half. Beckland has got 10, he got eight of them in the second half. They've held Johnson down only five after he got 14 in the first half. And it's double penalty, so White has got a little less pressure on him, shooting two. Right now it's a two possession game. It'll be three if he makes this free throw with only a minute left. So two big free throws by White. Classical actually outscored Charlestown from the line, up from the floor. But Charlestown outscored Classical from the free throw line. In regulation time, uh, Classical made five free throws. Charlestown made 11. So Classical actually outscored Charlestown from the floor. But the game is won at the free throw line. Classical's missed seven. They've actually missed eight. So
So they're five for 13 from the line. Charlestown outscored them by six from the free throw line. And that's the difference in the game. So 50 seconds left. Classical has a mountain to climb. They trail by seven. It's a three possession game. And Charleston is at the line shooting two. And it would take a major miracle for Classical to come back. They have played an outstanding basketball game. Everybody that stepped on the floor for Classical played outstanding. And every, most of the basketball people handed this one to Charlestown before the game was even played, thinking it would be Charlestown and East Boston in the final. But they forgot to mention that to the classical kids who have played great all year and they played great again today. Shot is missed. Spence with the rebound. A brew for three, no good. Rebound by Houston. And that'll be another foul against Quintana with 42 ticks left. So it's going to look like a, a double digit win in overtime for Charlestown, but it was a lot closer than that as Classical has been forced to foul here and put them at the line. So it's going to look like an easy win, but Jack O'Brien, coach of Charleston's going to go home knowing that he's getting out of here. A very lucky man. A 13 to 3 run in overtime. As the Brew lets fly with another three off the rim, no good. Tipped up, tipped away. Davis saves it, picked off. Lead pass to Johnson. And the exclamation point by Johnson as he stuffs it home. He's got, he got six in overtime. Spence lets it fly. No good, Johnson with the rebound. And Charlestown will just hold on to it. Classical won't even bother playing defense. It'll look like a 12-point win when you read the paper. But it was a lot closer than that. Back and forth we went. Classical had a one-point lead at halftime. They handled the press very well. They fell behind in the second half. They stormed back, and Vince Spence Hit a big shot at the buzzer to tie it up at 73. And then Charlestown went into high gear. They ran out quickly and scored the first eight points of the overtime. Classical could only manage a free throw by a brew and a basket by Spence as they were outscored 13 to three in the overtime. Classical season will come to an abrupt halt. They finished 16 and four by an outstanding season and they played great tonight. They forced a very good Charlestown team, a perennial championship team, into overtime.